This should be obvious, but I am a chiropractor, which means that I spend a lot of my days doing this. Now, getting your neck adjusted or cracked has become a generally accepted method of handling both new and old neck pain, headache, and discomfort complaints. However, it is also believed by some to be the cause of a potential very dangerous medical condition known as a stroke. Given that strokes are well known for drastically altering people's lives for the negative, if not outright killing them, as well as the legal obligation of every chiropractor to go through this conversation with any patient who he intends to adjust their neck for, I figured it would be a good idea to create a video to help dispel any concerns around this myth. All right, so let's start with some anatomy. A stroke is defined as a lack of oxygen to the brain. This can be done by one of two mechanisms. The first, an ischemic stroke, describes lack of blood flow to the brain by a blocked artery, usually from a thrown clot, after having been built up in a dissected artery. A hemorrhagic stroke implies bleeding directly onto the brain, such as the case with blunt force trauma to the head. There is a fear that neck manipulation may put strain on either the vertebral artery or the carotid artery, and therefore may throw any forming clot or help to create one that then goes on to cause an ischemic stroke. Now, it is important to know that not all strokes are created equally, nor do they all present equally. There can be great variation between individuals, as well as whatever the severity of the case is. Some strokes may happen in minutes, others may occur over the course of several hours or even days. All right, with the background knowledge out of the way, let's get into the evidence. The first study we're looking at was published in 2001 in the Stroke Journal. This study examined patients with vertebrobasilar insufficiencies, or VBIs, which are strokes, that were admitted to Ontario hospitals. It was held for five years between 1993 and 1998, and those patient records were cross-referenced to find who had visited a chiropractor prior to. There was an association found between chiropractic usage and stroke occurrence in a population under the age of 45. There was no association found over the age of 45. So right off the bat, that doesn't necessarily look good. The authors stress, however, that due to the very, very low rate of occurrence of strokes, yet the high volume of neck manipulations and chiropractic usage, that it would be important for further research and study. Fast forward seven years to 2008, this time looking at a study published in the European Spine Journal. This study compared the frequency and rate of occurrence of stroke following both chiropractic visits and compared that to the frequency or occurring rate of strokes following primary care physician visits. These are family doctors. It was held between the years of 1993 and 2002. Of the patients who did have a stroke, they were three times more likely to have seen either a chiropractor or their medical doctor prior to having that stroke. This was true for populations under the age of 45. In populations over the age of 45, the association was only found in those who had visited their physician, not those who had visited their chiro. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. Now, does anybody believe that MDs would be intentionally inducing strokes in their patients? I think we can all agree that the answer is definitely no. Or if you're an absolute cynic, at least not intentionally. At least that's what I'm reading on WebMD. Wow, there are a lot of different kinds of medicines. There's a cat in here. Yet here's a study that claims that patients are having strokes at equal rates following visiting either a chiro or their medical doctor, and actually more frequently seeing their physician if they were over the age of 45. The authors conclude that this association was likely due to a patient with early onset stroke symptoms trying to seek care for those symptoms specifically. That's a very important distinction, we'll revisit that in a moment. Fast forward another 10 years. This article was published in 2017 in the Journal of Stroke and Cerebrovascular Disease. This study was very similar to the previous study, however, was examining a different artery, namely the carotid. The same findings were made as before. However, in addition, it was found that the patients who went on to have a stroke were very likely to be initially presenting with neck pain and a headache. This is prior to even receiving any kind of intervention or treatment, including neck manipulation. For context, neck pain and headache are two very early presenting signs of stroke that may show up before any other kind of very telltale symptoms might like facial droopiness. The authors again conclude that the association is likely patients seeking care for their early stroke symptoms 
this time with more evidence. And this is the most plausible explanation for this observed relationship. Patients who undergo chiropractic care or medical care and then go on to have a temporal stroke afterwards were most likely presenting with a stroke in progress that the practitioner failed to recognize. Again, regardless of profession. Because the signs were not caught in this patient, they would then go home and proceed about their life until eventually the stroke progressed in severity, landing them in the hospital. Okay, so since we've kind of established here that chiropractic itself doesn't cause strokes any more frequently than going to see your physician does, there still might be concern over the actual cracking itself. After all, it does look kind of shocking if you're not experienced with it. This fear can be exacerbated when we are constantly watching media and entertainment even of just how fragile some people's necks could be. Let's just get fixed with ice or heat. Ice now, heat later. Think of how many times you've seen in Hollywood movies people get their necks snapped by Jason Bourne or James Bond or Black Widow. Although if we're being perfectly honest, having my head trapped between Scarlett Johansson's legs would definitely be in my top three ways to go out. Yet another study published in the Journal of Body and Movement Therapies compared the forces that went through the vertebral artery on neck manipulation directly to passive range of motion or orthopedic testing. Now, passive range of motion, for those who don't know, is when a patient turns their head or any part of their body as far as they can, and then the practitioner applies a little bit of pressure in order to move it further. It's commonly used in a lot of different clinics to determine exactly what structures are affected, or if the patient does have additional range of motion present that they're just not able to actively achieve themselves. And funnily enough, the forces and stresses on the vertebral artery were always found to be less during a cervical manipulation than during passive range of motion testing. Could you possibly think of a time where people may do this pretty consistently in their lives? Yeah, if you're a front sleeper, you have to turn your head to the side to breathe, and this is essentially holding your neck in a passive range of motion for six to eight hours a day. As far as I know, there is no association between front sleeping and rate of stroke occurrence. This implies that getting your neck adjusted could be the thing to worsen a stroke in progress. There are many other normal normal daily living activities that are just as likely to worsen a stroke in progress, if not more likely. Oh, and here's yet another study published in the Journal of Neurology to back that exact statement up. The last concern you may have is, oh god, what if I'm having a stroke right now then? Do, do you know what if this is the emotion to aggravate it? Well, first off, if you're having a stroke right now, you're gonna be having a stroke in an hour as well. I'm aware that that's a little bit morbid and may seem cold-hearted, but it's also the objective truth. Get to a hospital. There is always an inherent risk, but that risk has been found to be astronomically small. An article published in the Canadian Medical Association Journal compared the number of BBIs caused by neck manipulation to the estimated total of neck manipulations performed by chiropractors in the period between 1988 and 1997. In an estimated 134 and a half million neck adjustments, 23 BBIs occurred. To obtain the percent likelihood of getting a stroke with these numbers, we do some simple division to find the actual percentage chance being, one second, I got it here. 0.0000001% chance or 1 in 5.85 million. I don't have the numbers for some other statistically unlikely things, but I'll put them up now as well. Despite that very, very, very low percentage, a good healthcare practitioner will still do a full neurological examination in any cases that might be considered sketchy. Namely, they go through the dance of whether or not you're having a stroke. The five Ds and three Ns. Dysphagia, diplopia, dysarthria, drop attacks, dizziness, ataxia, numbness, nausea, and nystagmus. If you're not presenting with a bunch of those, I really wouldn't be too worried. That's it guys, the hard evidence on how chiropractic care and neck adjusting specifically does not cause stroke in healthy patients. As well as the most likely explanation for that extremely rare scenario, of certain individuals having a stroke following presentation to either a chiropractor or a primary care physician. There will always be people in the world and on the internet who claim something to be true when objectively it is not. 
when pressed for any kind of evidence or statistical analysis to support their claims, they come up short with either nothing at all, some very sparse and sketchy case studies, or I just know it. If you are one of these people, please go ahead and comment down below about just how wrong I am because it helps drive traffic to my channel, so thank you in advance. Regardless of the evidence, if you are uncomfortable with any kind of therapeutic intervention, including getting your neck adjusted, please say so. You have the right to revoke consent at any given time. You may be open to trying neck manipulation and then find that you're uncomfortable with it after one or two attempts, then you don't have to do it anymore. We can explore other ways. As always, I would greatly appreciate a subscription down below. It helps me to afford the cheapest gas available at the station. You can click here for the previous video or you can click here for the most recent one. Have yourselves great days.